Hi guys, me again. Just sort of give you a quick look at what we used to use back in the day to actually edit GTA 3. A little program called Moo Mapper by KCOW. Um, back in the day this was like, whoa. This was the program, you know. It's the only thing we had, um, apart from a lot of other tools for texture editing. Um, but to actually get the th what you'd um, created into the game and to actually ma mod the maps and everything, this was the program. Later it was developed to do Grand Theft Auto Vice City. Um, it was, in its day, 360 meg of memory was quite large. A lot of you will remember back in the day that memory was at a premium back then, 4 gigs. In fact, even 1 gig was unheard of. <laughs> 512 meg was a lot of memory back then, but uh, as I say, those were the days. Now, um, if we just launch Moo Mapper, there it is in all its glory. As I say, back in the day, this was the only way that we had of actually editing GTA. Um, on modern systems, it still runs, it's quite nippy. Uh, we still have problems, uh, mainly with rendering. Uh, let me just load in Land North East. Uh, where are we? Land North East of Apple. As you can see, the texturing doesn't work too well on modern graphic cards. We have to disable that, which gives us detail. And uh, we can zoom in at various levels, see various parts of the map. That's uh, so um, you can see under the map, around the map. It's quite a nippy little program. Um, back in the day, as I said, it was the only thing we had. If I just load in the rest of the northern area, so you just get an idea of where things are. Yeah. And there was the infamous overview. And then what you did to um, actually add items to the map is you'd create yourself a new um, a, a new item placement file, a new IPL file, call it something, drag in the object definitions from the IDE files onto the map such as my original coast bridge, if I just load that in, there it is, just popped up there see? and that's how I, in the back in the day, that's how I actually added this uh, this bridge to GTA just using simple Moo Mapper. Of course, back in the day when we were scrolling, it was more kind of this speed, and you were getting like one frame a second. <laughs> uh, fond memories, but um, yeah, yeah, then were the days. So that's just a quick uh, a quick overview of Moo Mapper. Um, I won't go too deeply into it. It's only a very quick brief view. I haven't used it to do most of the modern mods because, again, it might be just a quirk of the modern systems, but anything you add using this package does tend to not be in the same place that you've placed it when you load the game. Um, things tend to be off, so um, I tend to use a, a more modern package, uh, which is called um, the GTA Map Editor, which we will be looking at next. And there is the GTA map editor. 0 0.32 beta. Uh, don't let the beta status put you off. It's still a very powerful program, very capable, and very good at what it does. It's quite stable. As you can see there, it will also do GTA Vice City, and it will also do uh, GTA San Andreas, if any of you are interested in editing that game. Uh, GTA 3 Vice City and San Andreas use the same game engine. Um, expanding the capability of the objects uh, each time a game was released, uh, you know, more objects could be added, they could be uh, mapped in and out. Um, so th it's the same game engine, so th this map, map editor will actually edit all of those. Uh, it will not edit GTA 4. GTA 4 uses a different game engine. This editor is not compatible. Uh, there are other resources out there on the GTA modding sites if you want to edit GTA 4. Again, that's beyond the scope of this video. So, uh, let's just quickly load up GTA 3. There's a reason I've done this. I want to keep it within one video, 15 minute length. Um, 
and give you a quick preview of the map editor. It's not a tutorial. If anyone's interested, I will upload a tutorial. Not a problem. Um, you know, if you want me to, that's something I am willing to do. Uh, let me just load in a few of the areas so you're not staring at a boring blank screen. There we are. Rendo. Um, the movement and control of this editor is done with a combination of mouse. You'll notice it renders in full colour with texturing. Um, the keyboard cursors, control, shift for accelerate, control for height. Let's just move back. There we are. There. So that's the northern part of the GTA game world. Um, just to give you an idea. Uh, that there and that there is the pipeline that you can't pilot past uh, in the game when you're trying to get from um, Staunton to Shoreside. If you try to get there early via boat this pipeline stops you. Uh, there is a piece of coast over here which is the huge um, piece of land that I referred to in earlier videos. Uh, which actually is there, but this map editor will not render level of detail, which is why you can't see it. I will show you that piece of land in a minute by uh, adding it back in, just so that you can see how big this single uh, model is. And it is a single model, um, which is the idea of, uh, of, of loading up this editor to give you a quick peek and to show you that single model. Um, here you will see the uh, north coast of Portland, the stone pier that I added my bridge to, the north coast of Staunton with the army base, and if I just load my original coast bridge in, that's where it sits. I simply built bridges right the way across, added some um, supports uh, just to make it look pretty and uh, made sure it was tied in because you can actually go in at quite a deep level if we if we slow the cursor down here there we are um, click back on the map, there we are yeah, if we slow down to say a speed of 3 um, try dropping Steve, that might work there we are so you can actually get in at quite a deep level. Um, you know, you can you can see just exactly how the model that you're trying to work with is stitched. In this case, imperfectly uh, to the coast or to the to the to the area that you're trying to map it to or, or stitch it to. Um, so you can actually get in quite close, which is necessary. Uh, again, if you you know if you're trying to map something into the game, you don't want lumps, bumps, misplacements. So, as I said, it's a very, very capable editor. Um, you can see it's made up of various bridges. Placed at various angles, six in all. Sorry, eight in all. Um, so that's that's how the bridges were built. And again, I did the same when I, when I did the other bridges. Um, Coast Bridge was built from here up and over. The new bridges, which I th think are still uploading at the moment, uh, as I make this video, which go across here to the picnic area down here, and across from the lift bridge in the south, which I haven't rendered at the moment, um, across to the airport down on the south. Um, there is the observatory, and just as a note of curiosity, before I get on with showing you this north coast texture, sorry, north coast model, um, if we actually render the southwestern part of Shoreside Vale, you'll notice that Ghost Town pops in um, as we actually render the southwestern part of the land. So the, the, all of the definitions and the objects for Ghost Town are actually part of the image placement library for the southwest part of Shoreside Vale for some reason. Um, best known to Rockstar. Now, this huge 3D model... Um, there we are. Let's just get to a, a reasonable place on the map. There we are. 
This huge 3D model, I happen to know, is stored in the generic image definition library, and I happen to know it's object number 1251. So if we just make ourselves a new image placement file so we're not messing up any of the game ones, we'll make a new file. I'm going to put it into a mods directory, we'll call it GTA Mapper. There we are. Select so that all of the objects we're about to add to the game go into that new image placement definition file. New Generic 1251, it's already uh, marked as level of detail. OK, you're asking, where is it put that particular object? If we scroll back out... I did say it was large. <laughs> I was not joking. Um, remember how to drive the game. There we are. We accelerate the object movement. We place it somewhere near north coast. The mapper will always put newly in inserted objects near to where the camera is, as close as it can. So let's move in. That's a bit closer. There we are. We'll move that in here. accelerate it we need to now what we need to do is we need to make that roughly the same height as the surrounding coast and then we need to stitch it on now we need to drop the cursor speed control to something more manageable like two we can then just stitch that piece of coast Maybe a bit more. There we go. That's now, for the purposes of demonstration, stitched. Let me just put the cursor back up to something usable. There we are. So if we uh, pull back on the camera view, you can see that piece of coast is now stitched. We can actually go right in and stitch it properly. We're still a bit high. Oops. There we go. There it is. We've now stitched that piece of coast on to the northeastern part of Shoreside Vale. When I said that object was huge, I was not joking. That is one huge 3D model. Um, it is not one texture, I retract that statement, but it is one huge 3D model and we can check this because this mapper has a very useful function we can examine 3D objects. One single object, 126 vertices with 59 faces, UV mapped with two materials, two textured materials. So what they've done is they have just made one huge wireframe 3D model and as has as has been correctly pointed out the textures do repeat you can see them from the vertical lines here which is a classic texture repeat but they've repeated it across one 3D wireframe one big single 3D wireframe so um, unlike this part of the coast where they've stitched different parts of the 3D models together this is one big single huge 3D model and then they've just literally repeated the texturing across it there are only literally as I say if we look at the DFF here there are only two textures and they've just gone dink 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 and repeated it across the whole model um, there is no collision data we can look at the collision data there are no boxes spheres meshes or anything uh, on that model so if the game script 
was altered to allow you to pilot a boat up to that cliff, you could actually drive through it and off the edge of the map. Uh, which is why my ghost bridge, when I built it from the army base, had to be so high. Because if we actually zoom in here to the uh, army base, there's the little old army base there. That's a daunting piece of coast. It's still not stitched properly. That is a daunting piece of coast. And my bridge literally had to go over that. It had to climb over that. Um, and then go left once it climbed, and then down into Ghost Town. Yeah. So that is clarification of my description in the previous video of what I meant when I incorrectly called that one huge texture is not is one huge model. So um, there we go. I hope that makes things a bit clearer and uh, corrects and corrects my incorrect phraseology in previous videos. So um, just a quick pre quick peek of the GTA mapper, its capabilities. And if you, as I say, if you'd like me to do um, a tutorial, I will quite happily upload one. Um, just put it in the comments, and I will make a proper several parts tutorial video on how to use the mapper. So until the next one, thanks for watching once again. Um, I will catch you in the next one. Cheers, guys.